All right, so coming up on this episode of Pixel.info, using 3D objects in Photoshop and Illustrator. Sponsored by UNoob.net, the newbie network. Music on Pixel.info is brought to you by Hacken. Hello, welcome to the first episode of Pixel.info. I'm Ekin. I'm Dingo. And I'm Pedro. All right, to start things off, I'm gonna be looking at the 3D capabilities of Photoshop and Illustrator. Let's take a look. So using 3D objects to more easily rotate a product's position is a huge time saver. Before, we could only use 3D objects inside Illustrator, which has flaws. So let's run through the Illustrator workflow to show you what I mean. In Illustrator, we'll draw half of the object's path, we'll go under Effects, 3D, Revolve. We then map the label, then copy and paste in the Photoshop. Now this is great, but if we needed to rotate the object, we'd have to go back into Illustrator. And here's where we start to see the comms. First, we can't see what it'll look like inside the comp. And as you can see, we have to re-render the object each time we move it around. We even have to render if we cancel out. Wouldn't it be great if we could just do this? Photoshop's ability to read 3D objects is a huge time saver. To set this object up, we can model in any 3D application. We'll be using Maya for our example. We can modify a cylinder or import an illustrator curve and revolve around the surface. A couple of things to keep in mind when texturing. First is you can't use a small pick to repeat a pattern. You must use textures big enough to cover up your UVs. Second is the material shader won't export. To make a color, make sure to add a texture map. Another drawback is, the lights don't render correctly. We can export this as an OBJ file, and here we can see the two files it exports, the OBJ file and an MTL file that has the texture info. In addition, you'll also need these three texture files that are connected to it, the cap, label, and the bottle color. We can open it in Photoshop. We can use the default size. So we can activate the 3D tools by double clicking on the layer. The tools pop up at the top. We could select the rotate and roll tool to orbit around. And as you can see, the lighting info isn't read properly. We can change the light settings in the render mode. We can change it to cube or white likes looks okay. The one I found that looked the best is under Render Mode, Shaded Illustration. That looks better, but the con to using this render is that it adds a stroke around the object. We can work around this by cranking up the crease threshold all the way up. We can then change the line color. In our comp, if we drop down the layer options, we can see the textures attached. Something to keep in mind is we can't add any new textures, but we can edit them. We can double click the texture name to open up the texture. Inside the texture, you can see any changes made will update. This makes editing fast and easy. Just save to update any changes that may come up. Plus, we can apply layer styles. So that's working with 3D objects in Photoshop and Illustrator. Alright, so I'm going to be posting our 3D PSD files on our website. You can check them out by going to pixel.info, then click on the 3D tag. You can also leave comments and suggestions on other objects we can model. Alright, so that does it for today's episode of pixel.info. Until next time, I'm Ekin. I'm Pedro. And I'm Dingo. See you next time. 
sponsored by NGHost.com.